So thank you very much, Yipeng, for the intro, nice introduction and the, for the invitations. And uh, I think this uh, season has been a very, very great talks with many, many great talks. And hopefully the community it's uh, uh, will benefit it from, from this. So today uh, I'm going to talk about not my current work, but the previous work, but still it's very relevant. I hope I will, I will, uh, I will convince you that it's very relevant. Uh, so it's about the brittle to ductile transition, uh, specifically for notch, uh, fracture toughness of the glassy material. And mainly I will talk about this transition as the manifestation due to the, the loading rate, edge, which is the microstructure and the geometry. So before I go in details, let me introduce the, the example of glassy materials. So these are the very few, uh, which is very used in many, many way. So the polymer glasses, the granular materials, which use in the uh, pharmaceutical industries, understanding the earthquake stuff, and then metallic glasses, of course, which is the very, very, uh, uh, the metal which used for a phone screen and other, other electronic systems. So what is the material is about? So this material is non-crystalline materials. They are short range. They have a very attractive uh, material properties. For example, here, if you look at the ill strength versus this ill uh, strength young modulus, the map. So it has a very high, uh, the ill strength or elastic limit. It has a corrosion resistance, scratch resistance, and it's very easily formable. And hence, because of this, it has a many, many applications uh, ranging from the you know normal glass, what we use it uh, at our home, uh, in, 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 in um, automotive or uh, aerospace, the component, metal components, the phone screens, the solar panels, even in the biomedical materials and sports and in the space. So great, so uh, this is the very, uh, very, very great applications because of these old properties. But the challenge, key challenge in this material is the variability in the fracture toughness. So here I'm showing you the, the many, uh, the literature papers showing that different materials, means like different composition of making the bulk metallic glasses with the, the toughness variation, how the toughness is varies. And also I am showing some of the same composition, but with different processing, like diff doing an uh, annulling at different, uh, temperature or at same temperature, but with different at different hours. And it's showing the very huge, the variation in the fracture toughness, which we can see in this plot, where I plotted the, uh, from this paper is fracture energy versus the poison ratio. So for smaller poison ratio, you have a brittle. And then if you increase the poison ratio due to some composition or some microstructure effect, it get tough. In the similar way, if you do the annealing, so if you do very small annealing for a few hours, you have very huge toughness. But if you do annealing longer, but not that long, but like few hours, like about like in the same order of magnitude, but still you have variation almost of the, the two order of magnitude, like from going from 100 to almost 10. So, so this is huge variability in the fraction toughness and specifically the brittle to ductile transition is which which we can show here. So the key question is what I'm addressing in this talk is what is the origin of this ductile to brittle transition or brittle to ductile transitions? So with this, I have this outline. So I will go first with background to explaining the, the mechanism and formation of the, these materials. And then I will define the problem, the boundary problem definition. Then very briefly, uh, I will go over the numerical framework, which is not my contribution, but I, will, I, I have used that framework for some of my analysis. And then I will go describe some of the results from numeric and the theory what we developed and with some experiment support. And at the end, I will conclude with some remarks. So let's start with the, the glass formation. So how this material is formed. So here I'm, I, we have a, the, the, uh, the specific volume versus temperature. So if you go from like, if you cool from liquid, if you cool very slowly, it will go a crystalline structure, right? It will go in order. But if you cool very fast, then that liquid get like go, instead of going in the order structure, it will go in the disorder structure, which is the glass. Okay, so here there is no any the order structure, the microstructure, all atoms are, are, are located like very randomly. So because of that, what it happens is that like when you cool fast, your system stuck down in some local minima instead of going the global minima. 
So because of its in the in the some the local minima, what it happened that it, their viscosity is sort of at, at after the glass transitions, it, almost as the the logarithmic scale here you can see. Okay, so because of this, it what happened like it's this microstructure is 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 disorder, which means it's fluidic microstructure, but it behave like a the mechanical behavior because it can sustain the stress because of the high viscosity. So what is the basic mechanism, deformation mechanism in this material? Because this is disorder, there is no any uh, structural defect like dislocation in metal, what we have. So what people have introduced uh, in, the, in the community, uh, the basic mechanism of the deformation is called shear transformation zone. So within a case, there are a few atoms, upon loading, they will, you know, uh, they will uh, rearrange themselves and induce a local inelastic deformations. So here I'm showing the very schematic view. So th this is the, the initial, the configuration before loading. And once you, you impose a shear stress, and the, you can see that some places, those atoms, they rearrange themselves and induce a locally inelastic formation. And there are many can be. And if you keep in increasing the loading, those local inelastic deformation make, can form a shear band or can, you know, uh, localize and, and induce the, the large deformation. So when the individual uh, this STZ happen, that means that the system go from one local minima to other local minima kind of very step by step. But when they see when many STZ happen together in, in some way and synergetically, they can go from one global minima to other global minima hence and, and induce the plastic flow. So in other way that this is the industry intrinsically non-equilibrium, you know, the evolving structure. It means like, uh, even though if you don't apply load, it means like if if very constant load, not apply load, but very constant load. And if you wait a very long period of time, structure is evolving. For example, our window, which we don't see right now is, is flowing. But if you look at in the centuries years, that glass is flowing, like you can see that, that motion. So what are the models available for modeling this deformation? So they, they start with the, the floor, floor defect theory where their assumption was like you, because of this disorder, you may also have a free volumes. So at some atoms nearby, there is a free volumes we start, which is the now the internal variable. And when you impose load, that atom can move that in that free volume and hence induce the local the inelastic deformation. And there has been uh, the mesoscale framework uh, using the, the SLB inclusion. So when that STG happen in elastic deformation, instead of tracking those all local atoms, you just approximate that region as an inclusion and, and you introduce or you approximate that deformation as an eigenstrain. And then you solve the SLB solution, which is the quadratic form to solve the problem. And there have been many models uh, on, on this work. And there is a continuum. So in these both models, the only there is only one internal state variable. In this, the flow defect theory, it's uh, the volume fraction we star. In the mesoscale, this is what uh, as of now is eigenstrain. And uh, there is continuum theory, which is called stress uh, transformation zone theory, which is mainly developed in the the physics community, in the statistical physics community, whereby they introduce not only the the two internal state variable. One is the density of the STZs. And second is the orientations with loading. And so in this talk, I mainly focus in this, the third last mechanisms in my, uh, the fracture problem. So before I go further, let me introduce the, what this theory. So in this main, uh, the crux is the, the decoupling of the two thermodynamical system, which one is called vibrational and second is called configurational. Okay. So the total energy is, can be divided in the, these two, uh, one is vibrational and second is the, the configurational. And let me show you what this uh, vibrational versus the configurational. So in vibrational usually is like what the area term is, is vibrating around that, you know, the local positions, right? And which induce the ordinary temperatures. And so when you do the derivative of that energy with respect to the entropy SK of the vibrational, it will give you the ordinary temperature. But now, you have STZ, which is also a disorder, right? Very because the system is disordered. So the STZ is happening also very randomly, which you can say uh, thermodynamically or statistically, uh, it's also a, having the energy, which is the, 
the configurational energy, which means when your the rest is evolved or microstructure evolve and induce some deformation, which is through the, the configurational uh, uh, the evolution of the of the energy. And when you do the derivative of the entropy from that for that configurational energy, you get the is called effective temperature, which represent your configurational or internal microstructure. So and the SC is the configuration entropy, right? So uh, this is the key, the key parameter which I will talk more, more and more how this key parameter is involved in the in the in the continuum theory of the the, the, the solid mechanics. So with this background, so this is my the elastoplastic response or equation. So the the, the plastic flow hence the is mainly depend on your the chi effective temperature because this is what the your structure evolving right. And the, the orientation which dictate here is through the, the, the derivative stress tensor. Okay. And then you have a and this gamma, which is showing the, the density of the SCG, which is kind of the, the Boltzmann constant or the energy which have exponential uh, the form. And then you have an internal you know, dynamic of that internal variable chi, which is the representing your microstructures, which is nothing but your how much your plastic work you input and how the structure is evolving. This is the, the key, uh, the dynamics of that equation. And then we use the Hooke's law and then the kinematic, which is the additive deformation because here your, uh, the elastic deformation is very small and you can decompose the total deformation in this, in, in the additive manner. And then the force balance, the, the equilibrium equation, the divergence is equal to the, the, the velocity or the gradient of the velocity. So with this, let me introduce the, the key problem, what I am uh, studying and using those equations and, 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 and doing the tough. So here I'm mainly studying the notch fracture toughness. So here in the left, I have a, the outer problem, which I say outer problem, which means like you have a you know real boundary value problem, you have a structures, you have a crack, you impose some loading, and then you have a crack size. And it usually is what we call the stress intensity, the K1 field, which induced nearby the crack tip. And inside the process zone, you have all the plastic or every all the nonlinear phenomena going on. So instead of modeling whole problem, what we do, we do the boundary layer formulations. So we zoom this part the near the crack tip or the with some notch radius. Okay. And then we impose the, the K field. Which can which induce through the geometry and the loading real boundary value, okay? But here we are just imposing that the K field through the K1 dot, which is my loading rate, through this velocity field around this the uh, the boundary layer boundary. And so, and then the key question is the how then the the notch toughness is it, it depends on this loading rate K1 dot and the the notch radius and the interstic initial structure which is captured through the chi naught. So to give a picture, uh, you know, the hand wave for the experiment. So when you do annealing for very small time, uh, you have a very high chi naught, which means you have many, 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 like high chi naught means you have a high density of the STGs. You have many source, source spots or many inelastic deformation and hence you have a plasticity inherently and hence it gives you the tougher material. But if you handle and more, it means you are removing those soft spot from the system and hence you have very less uh, probability or less density of those soft spots and hence you can have a localization and induce the brittle kind of behavior. So with this, you know, the first hand uh, understanding from this experimental, let me go through the, how the equations and the simulations and everything is do. So here I'm, pro I, I, I'm, I'm giving the very briefly, I'm not going to detail this, uh, the, all the equations. This is a numerical framework. So yes, we are, our, our interest here is implementing or the studying the low, low loading rate and the high loading rate. This equation are very stiff if you have a very low high loading rate, okay? So because of that, we rescale it with some parameter and, and, and convert it to a quasi-static uh, uh, conditions. Then uh, as per this paper, we use this projection method, which is equivalent to a, what people use in the in the fluid mechanics, uh, where you, we, where you have a, the the incompressibility condition, the divergence of velocity is zero, and here we have a the uh, the quasi uh, static 
condition the sigma divergence of sigma is zero so sigma and velocity is corresponding and the velocity and pressure is corresponding in these two method so what we do here like so uh from going from the n step to n plus one in middle we compute sigma p using the the uh, the the equation of the 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 constitutive equations sigma p we compute from the previous step and then we, if you know the sigma n plus one here and then in the next step we do use that sigma p for computing the deformation at the n plus one and then we impose the divergence of sigma equal to zero in this equation and hence you get this equation the last the delta uh, the divergence of sigma p equal to this equation now sigma p is known so you solve for the dn plus one And for the tracking the tracking the the free boundaries or the the which notch boundary free boundary condition, we use the level set in this paper. Usually they use the level set method, where you introduce the phi, which is the parameter defining like phase field. If it's outside, it's, it's less than zero. It's in the matrix. If it's the zero at the at the boundary and it is greater than zero, it's inside the it's defined the crack. And this is the function of the velocity field. So. You solve those all equations all together. So here is the preliminary results. And so here I'm using the Vitroy one is a my key example. Here are different parameter, Young modulus, Poisson ratios, and all material parameters. And so with this, uh, uh, the these are the very very preliminary results. So here I'm showing you the the pressures for different initial condition. One is kind of six hundred, and one is higher six sixty. And the below panel is showing the evolution of that internal variable, the chi. So if I run both, both together, you can see the ahead of the tip, if you have a lower chi where you have a very less number of soft spot where you can may have a possibility of, of, of forming the shear bands. And here you can see the, how the shear band is forming ahead of, and how you can see the, the crack is narrowing very, very much compared to the higher chi note where your crack, uh, your notch more or less is blunting out and hence the toughening is, is getting, right? So with this, uh, to, to quantify very carefully this the transition from the, the brittle to ductile, what we define here is the in, the, in the, in this material, usually the crack propagation is through the cavitation propagation. So these are the experimental uh, the observation and the some molecular dynamic simulation observation. So ahead of the crack tip, when your hydrotechnic stress are increased, your cavity is 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 formed ahead of the tip, notch tip, and then it's collides with the main notch tip, and 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 then the the notch is propagating or crack is propagating. So based on this, what we have here define, we look at the maximum hydrotechnic tension ahead of the tip, as a function of Ki which we are imposing. Okay. And when that maximum hydrostatic uh, tension hit the cavitation threshold, which is known from the uh, from this paper, and which is only purely function of the your material parameter, when that cavitation is hit the cavitation threshold, we define that K1 as our toughness, and I noted as a KQ. And now the key question is how this KQ is is is, is a function of loading rate, chi naught, and the, the geometry. And then we run the many, many simulation of with different, these three parameters. So here I'm the, this first panel, I'm showing the varying, uh, the, the loading rate by fixing the chi naught and the rho. Okay. So for the, 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 the green one is the higher chi naught, the red one is the middle one and the, the blue is, is, is the low chi naught. So it's going like, if you, if you have a small, <clears throat> smaller loading rate, it means like, you have a, the, 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 the tougher uh, or ductility is more. And when you increase the, the loading, it's, it's the, your toughness is decreasing and saturating at some, at, some, at some level. And the second is I'm fixing now the K1 rod and the row and I'm varying the chi naught. So for smaller, you have a very small toughness, but as you increase the chi naught, your toughness is increased. Okay. And the last one is the, I, I just look at the, the, the care, fixed care root and the different chi naught, but varying the rho, which is nothing but square root of rho, right? Square root of rho, this toughness is varying the square root of rho, which, which is what the, the fracture uh, 
stressing to fix uh, uh, the scaling law. So we have uh, these all many numerical data which scatter. So to understand this better, we develop a theory what by by doing the reduced dimensional analysis. So instead of having the two dimensional problem, we just focus on the notch tip and we approximate the total deformation at that notch tip by, by this scaling, impose K1 dot and the, the shear modulus and the, the geometry. When you do this one and using the constitutive and kinematic flow, you, you convert the all PD equation to a simple OD equation. It's, it's simple in terms of OD, but it's nonlinear still in, 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 the, in the time and in your the dynamics of your internal variable so now this equation are od and scalar and uh, during by doing the non uh, dimensionalizing of this equation we derive that the key parameter which is the c which is the ratio between two time scale one time scale is the tau external which is given by the effective loading rate and that tau zero plastic which is coming from the plastics over which your plasticity is happening at the small scale so when we plot all those numerical data by some uh, normalizing with uh, the the ill strength and the the square root of rho and with this parameter all those data are collapsed in the single master curve and here i'm explaining what it means so, so if a smaller smaller chi which means you have a high loading rate or smaller chi naught you have brittle behavior higher c you have a low loading rate or the high chi naught, we have a ductal. And in between, there is some non monotonic behavior, which I will explain in the subsequent uh, slides. So, uh, what is that means? So, let's go first the understanding this, uh, this law led to the, the, this region. What is that means? So, <clears throat> that means with, for a smaller chi naught, which means with the smaller uh, chi not and the high high loading rate. Here I'm showing the, the normalized stress at the notch tip as a function of time, normalized time. So when you have a very small uh, C, the red one, the dead tip is, is have a very high, because you're imposing very high loading rate, right? So before it, the tip is get yield, it accumulates load uh, very high. It accumulates the very huge stress. And then once it's uh, realized there is a plasticity, it's unload the whole load and get some the the, sub, uh, the saturated amount. So because of this, it introduces a very short time scales after the yielding. Okay. So what it happens like so, uh, it's it's enhanced the the loading at the next point of you know the next point upon the tip loading. So once this tip load is unload it will transfer that loading to neighboring point here. So the neighboring point is also not only experience the, the outer loading, but also experience the load from the, the tip yielding. And because of this, it just shoot up, the hydrostatic stress is shoot up, you know, you, you can see here at very, even though you are not increasing the K1 at all, but it's, it's, it's sort of here. So this is a kind of, it's called the elastoplastic instability. But if you, if you still decrease that, uh, the C value, which is uh, very small and very small chi naught and high k naught, then you, it may happen that you can hit that uh, cavitation threshold elastically. And so because of this, in the small, very small C value, you hit the, the cavitation threshold elastically, no matter what chi naught, what, uh, what loading rate, and hence you have a very constant toughness. It doesn't depend on the the chi naught or any uh, or all the loading rate, and in in the intermediate scale, where the tip yielding is happening, where enhancement of the next part is happening, and you shoot in the blue curve if you look at here, where the the your hydrostatic stress is shoot up, and hence hit the cavitation threshold before the elastic can so you know uh, the hit that cavitation, and hence the decrease in the uh, in the toughness. This is what this toughness is decreasing. It happen at this scale. And then what about the, the larger C value? So at larger C, you have a high chi naught or very loading, very small loading rate. And then at that location, if you look at the, uh, the, the stress, which basically is, is, is like 
the link right it's, it's very smoothly going from elastic and to the this one without any any an increment or accumulation of the stress and so that peak it can be uh they thought found from this transition uh, red theory uh, of the of the cosine uh that peak stress is nothing but the logarithmic of this parameter of the c value and hence we we say that in this region, the toughness is also following that logarithmic correction of the, the C value. So the basically, so the, in the in the small C value here, you have a square root of rho. In middle, you have a, some non monotony function. And then at the high C, you have a logarithmic correction in your toughness. So with, to, to see with experimental observation how this theory is fitting, so we have a few, uh, you know, data from the from, from the literature. So here I'm showing the the toughness from this paper, which is the experimental, with different as a function of loading rate. So because in our this key parameter loading rate is sitting in the in the in the denominator, I just put that data, you know, by inversing one over k dot. And here we you can see the very very for smaller very high chi node, you have about this same point is it was sitting here. And for the smaller loading rate, which is the, it's also going the logarithmic way, it's not showing here, but they don't have a intermediate data to confirm what this theory is predicting. And then same way, therefore, notch radius, even though your toughness is depend on the, the, the notch radius in this mesh, but when you do the normalization with that parameter, it get into collapse into the master code here. And then after our work, uh, this paper, which published in Nature Combination, they have did the experiment to understand the the chi knot on the toughness. Okay, so uh, uh, and here I'm showing the, the very similar result. So here they 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 normalize that toughness by the minimum toughness. So basically by this value, this is the minimum in our case, and this is what one here, and it's going up to. So you can see the ten, and then it's like going up to the two point five factor. Similarly, what we going up to thirty. Three factor of factor eight. So the, in in this region, it's confirming this theory. But if you go further high chi naught means higher C value, in that they re, they see in experiment some kind of plateau. Whereas in our case, it's it's it diverging logarithmically, right? It's, there is no plateau value. So key observation here is that in our theory, we use the stress based criterion to define the toughness. When we say the hydrodynamic stress. Out of the tip hit the cavitation, we define that toughness as a, as, a, as a toughness. But in this experiment, what they did is that the smaller chi node, they use again the stress based criteria to define the toughness, but higher chi node, they use the strain based criteria using the, the SEM images. So here you can see the, the, the smaller chi node here, which is somewhere here below, this is ratio below 0.95, they have a very small plastic zone. Or very small deformation, but as the chi naught increase, they see the huge increase in the in the plastic zone. This is ahead of the tip. You can see the the shear band and everything, which is showing the, the the plastic zone size. And from there, they they define the toughness based on the using the strain base criteria. And once they use the strain base, you see some kind of plateau. So you go from uh, the low toughness and then and, and some transition, and then you saturate some higher toughness. So with this, uh, these are the key takeaway uh, from the theory. So it, it basically give you a ductile to brittle transitions. It give you a, explain you the underlying competition between the interesting plastic, you know, the time scale and the loading time scale, and the roles play by the nonlinear yielding dynamics. So despite its relative simplicity, the you know the model capture you know silent future of glassy rheology. They are not specific to the STG model. And as a perspective, very important perspective, this is what the experimental here I'm showing, is to look at the interesting toughness. So here I'm showing the, as of now, the notch toughness means you have a finite radius now. And when interesting toughness means your row is equals to zero limit, what happened, your toughness, like there must be another length scale, interesting length scale that can, uh, which, you know, dominant the behavior. So here they saw the, in this experiment, that when they decrease that row, they find some kind of plateau value in the toughness. So initially it decreasing with the, the square root row, like, and then it's reaches some, some threshold. 
so to address this uh, this work is still is it's not published but we did some tried to introduce the the diffusion term in the your internal dynamics of your internal state variable where you have a length scale where your this is diffusion coefficient we have a length scale l squared d so here i'm just showing a very two uh, two cases of the the simulation what is predicting so the red open circle is for the the zero diffusion means length scale is zero it's is following the you know the the square root of rho without saturating but when i put the ld is a 50 and my rho is also about that about that square root about that rho square root of rho is is getting some saturate you can see in the blue star so this work it, it can be this is few preliminary data is not published and it can go further to analyze so with this i have this implications mainly two implications so one is the implication as i mentioned before even though is my focus was on glass this model can be applicable to any material system or uh, and, and especially the developing the, the materials and the processing parameters as long as like chi naught, which is representing microstructure, which you can correlate with your processing parameter, k1 do, which can correlate with the loading applications and rho is the geometry, given geometry. And hence you, you can design the materials and the process parameter uh, and, and come up with how the material will be tougher or, or brittle. And the second application is for other systems, like even though it's, it's, it's focus was on glass, it applicable to other material system or other contexts. Uh, for example, in this paper, Dr. Nilman look at the notch dynamics and they look at the effect size effect. And in their, in this paper, they have a, the same parameter, but with different uh, defining same parameter, but with different uh, the material parameters because the material is different. And they also, he also saw the similar kind of transition from brittle to ductile when and look at the this time scale loading rate to the interesting time scale. So with this, thank you very much for your attention.